everyone so we are presenting the ppt on the topic electrochemistry so let's start thank you nishita for calling me so here i begin a non spontaneous chemical reaction second an electrolytic cell is an apparatus for carrying out electrolysis process in an electrolytic cell are the reverse of those in an gal in a galvanic cell next please this is now electrolysis of of water electrolysis of water requires an electrolyte species that is less easily oxidized and reduced than water to carry the current now anode water is oxidized to oxygen gas and the reaction is 2h2o gives o2 plus 4h plus for plus 4 electron now cathode water is reduced to hydrogen gas and the reaction is 4h2o plus 4 electron gives 2h2 plus 4 4oh minus now electrolysis of sodium chloride uses different process to molten sodium chloride based on cell potential water minus 0.83 volt would be potentially reduced over sodium ions minus 2.71 volt based on cell potentials water 1.23 volt should be potentially oxidized over chloride ions plus 1.36 volt the observed product at the anode is cl2 not o2 because of a phenomenon called over voltage next please voltage additional voltage needed to maintain the rate of electron transfer at the electrode sodium interference over voltage is required when a half reaction has a significant activation energy and so a slow rate over voltage for formation of o2 or o2 or h2 is much greater than for formation of cl2 next please now quantitative electrolysis the amount of substance produced at an electrode by electrolysis depends on the quantity of charge passed through the cell reduction of one mole of sodium ions requires one mole of electrons to pass through the system the charge on one mole of electron is 96500 coulombs to determine the moles of electrons passed we measure the current and the time that the current flows charge equals to current into time and the unit is ampere into second because the charge on one mole of electron is 96500 coulomb the number of moles of electron passed through the cell is moles of electron equals to charge into one mole of electron upon 96500 coulomb next please now i invite my friend nana to explanation of the further presentation thank you thank you ria for calling me redox reactions Redox reactions are those involving the oxidation and reduction of species. OIL. OIL stands for oxidation is loss of electrons and RIG reduction is gain of electrons. Oxidation and reduction must occur together. They cannot exist alone. Next one. Oxidation half reaction. the reaction is zn gives zn2 plus plus two electrons as we can see in the figure the zn loses two electrons to form zn2 plus 
next one. Reduction half reaction. Reduction half reaction here, the reaction is Cu2 plus plus two electrons give Cu. As we can see in the below diagram, Cu2 plus gains two electrons to form copper. Next slide. Overall, Zn plus Cu2 plus gives Zn2 plus plus Cu. As we can see in the below diagram, here a U-tube, U-shaped tube is there, which is called salt bridge and copper cathode and zinc anode is connected with each other. Next one. Electrochemical cells. Electrochemical cells. Uh, first, electrodes. Electrodes are usually metal strips, wires connected by an electrically conducting wire. Salt bridge, as we have seen in the previous slide in the diagram, Salt bridge is a U-shaped tube that contains a gel permeated with a solution of an inert electrolyte at anode. Anode is the electro where oxidation takes place. And cathode, cathode is the electrode where reduction takes place. Next one. Convention for expressing the cell. Here is the express, expression for the expressing the cell. Electrons flow from anode to cathode. Anode is placed on left by convention. The standard potential of an, any galvanic cell is the sum of the standard half cell potentials for the oxidation and reduction half cells. Here, E0 cell is equal to E0 oxidation plus E0 reduction. Standard half cell potentials are always quoted as a reduction process. The sign must be changed for the oxidation process. The standard half cell potentials are determined from the difference between two electrodes. The reference point is also is called the standard hydrogen electrode, SHE, and consists of a platinum electrode in contact with H2 gas with 180 pressure and aqueous, aqueous H plus ions with one molar concentration. The standard hydrogen electrode is assigned an arbitrary value of exactly 0, 0.00 volts. And here comes the diagram where we can see the zinc anode is connected with the standard hydrogen electrode. Now I would like to invite Gunjan Bharadwaj for further people. Thank you. See, it is the electrochemical series. In, in electrochemical series, we can see that the fluorine is at the highest point. It is at the highest number, which is the it has the highest oxidation potential, and lithium is at the lowest, and it has the highest reduction potential. And we can see that as we goes from from up to down the reducing agent the ability of reducing decreases and as we go from down to up the uh, oxidizing agent decreases next electrochemical cells so when selecting two cell half cell reactions the more negative value will form the oxidation half cell consider the reaction between zinc and silver the reaction is ag plus plus one electron gives ag and zn plus two plus two electron gives zn and they have different electron they have different electrode potentials therefore zinc forms the oxidation half cell because it has the highest oxidation potential next spontaneity of a reaction the value of e naught cell is related to thermodynamic quantities of delta g naught and k the value of e naught cell is related to delta g naught by delta g naught is equals to minus nf e naught cell the value of k is related to delta g naught by delta g naught is equals to minus rt ln k next 
these are combined as minus nf e not cell is equals to minus rt lnk and rearranged at 25 degree celsius to give e not cell is equals to 0.0257 divided by n lnk or we can also say e not cell is equals to 0.0592 upon n log k here units are volts n is equals to moles and f is equals to 96500 coulombs next the nernst equation so cell potentials can be modified by temperature and composition changes according to the equation so the equation is delta g is equals to delta g not plus rt ln k putting the value of delta g and delta g not the equation is minus nfe is equals to minus nfe not plus rt ln k giving e is equals to e not minus rt upon nf into ln k where e is equals to potential of electrode or cell potential r is molar gas constant n is number of electrons evolved involved in the reaction f is faraday's which is 96500 coulombs E not is the standard potential temperature. T is temperature in Kelvin, and K is the equilibrium constant. Next, therefore, we can say E is equals to E not minus R T upon N F L N K. E is equals to E not minus putting the value of R two point putting the values. The equation finally we get is. E is equals to E not minus 0.0592 upon n into log k. The Nernst equation. A particularly important use of Nernst equation in the electrochemical determination of pH. Here we can see the Nernst equation can be applied to the half reaction, which is H2 gives 2H plus plus 2 electron. Next. for the half reaction h2 gives 2h plus plus 2 electron we can put the values as follows e h2 to h plus is equals to e not h2 to h plus minus 0.0592 v upon n into log h plus upon ph2 partial pressure of pressure of h2 E not is equals to zero volt for this reaction. As we know, standard hydrogen electrode is one eight pH two is one atm. So E H two to E H plus is equals to zero volt minus zero point zero five nine two volt upon n into log H plus. So the overall potential is given by E cell is equals to zero point zero five nine two volt. Into pH plus E reference, which rearranged to give an equation for the determination of pH, which is E cell minus E reference upon 0.0592 volt is equals to pH. A higher cell potential indicates a higher pH. Therefore, we can measure pH by measuring E cell. A glass electrode. Ag AgCl wire in dilute HCl with a calomel reference is the most common arrangement. We here we can see glass Ag plus Cl minus give HCl plus electron, where uh, electrode potential is given as minus zero point two two volt, and calomel Hg two Cl two plus two electron gives two Hg plus plus two Cl minus. Here electrode potential is zero point two eight volt. so the glass ph probe is constructed as follows ag slash agcl slash hcl slash glass h plus reference the difference in h plus from one side of glass membrane to the other causes a potential to develop which adds to the measured e cell e cell minus e reference upon 0.0592 is equals to ph So now I would like to call Gunjan to continue the further PPT. Now I am going to tell about batteries.
Batteries are the most important practical application of galvanic cell. Cell batteries consist of one galvanic cell. Single batteries have one galvanic cell, whereas multiple batteries consist of several galvanic cells, which are linked in the series to obtain desired voltage. Lead storage battery is the kind of battery. A typical 12 volt battery consists of six individual cells connected in series. Anode, lead grid packed with spongy lead where the reaction takes place as PB solid plus H2SO4 gives PBSO4 plus H plus plus two electrons. And on cathode, lead grid packed with lead oxide, PBO2 plus three H2SO4 plus two electrons gives PBSO4 plus H2. Electrolyte is 38% by mass sulfuric acid. Cell potential is 1.924 volt. Zinc dry cell, also called as lanthan cell, uses as viscous rather than a liquid solid. Viscous paste is used in this cell um, and anode is zinc metal, zinc metal can on outside of the cell. Zn solid is converted to Zn2 plus plus two electrons and at that cathode those two electrons are used and they form MnO2 plus two NH4 plus two electrons give Mn2O3 plus two NH3 plus two H2O. Electrolyte used in the cell is NH4Cl plus ZnCl paste. Cell potential is 1.5 but it then changes to 0 0.08 volt as per the use. Next is alkaline dry cell. It is modified Langlange cell which is used to replace NH4Cl with NaOH or KOH. At anode, zinc metal can are used on outside the cell and Zn solid plus 2OH gives ZnO plus H2O and it releases two electrons. And at cathode, MnO2 plus carbon black paste on graphite gives MnO2 plus H2O plus two electrons Mn forms Mn2O3 plus two OH aqueous. Electrolyte used in this cell is NaOH or KOH and ZnOH2 paste. Cell potential is 1.5 volt but longer lasting high power and more suitable current and voltage. In mercury cell, mercury dry cell, it's a modified Langlands cell which replaces MnO2 with HgO and uses steel cathode. And at anode, zinc metal is used on outside the cell, which forms the reaction as Zn solid plus 2OH gives ZnO plus H2O plus 2 electrons. At cathode, HgO is in contact with the steel, which forms the reaction as 2HgO plus 2H2O gives plus 2 electrons, forms Hg liquid plus 2OH minus ions. Electrolyte used are KOH and ZnOH2 paste. Cell potential for this cell is 1.3 volt. Next battery is nickel cadmium battery. It is a modified Langlands cell as well, but it is rechargeable. Anode, cadmium cell. Anode is consists of cadmium metal. Can Cd plus 2 OH minus ions form CdOH2 plus 2 electrons. At cathode, nickel compound or nickel metal is used. NiO OH plus H2O, it takes one electron and forms NiOH2 plus OH minus ions. Electrolyte nickel oxyhydroxide NiO OH and the cell potential is 1.30 volt. Next we do have is lithium ion, Li ion. The newest rechargeable battery is based on migration of Li plus ions. Anode, Li metal or Li at atom which is impregnated graphite and forms reaction as Li solid is converted to Li plus one electron. Metal oxide or sulfur LiCl before or inorganic solvents, solid state polymer also are used in this cell. The cell potential for battery is 3.0 volt. Next we do have is T3H4 or H2 which react to water and most common is H2. 
It is basically used for space programs majorly at anode. Porous and the reaction is 2H2, 2H2 plus 4OH minus gives gives 4H2O plus 4 electrons. Cathode, porous carbon containing metallic catalyst and the reaction is O2 plus 2H2O. It takes those 4 electrons and forms 4OH minus ions. Electrolyte hot aqueous KOH solution is used in the cell and the cell potential is 1.23 volt but only 40% of the cell capacity is there. Now, fuel cells are not batteries because they are not self-contained. Fuel cells are typically about 40% conversion to electricity. Means the total charge which is given, only 40% of them are converted to the electricity and the rest of all the charge is lost as heat. Excess heat can be used to drive turbine generators. Now the next topic is corrosion. Corrosion is the oxidative deterioration of metal. 25% of steel which is produced in USA goes to replace steel structures and products destroyed by corrosion. Rusting of iron requires both oxygen and water. Rusting results from tiny galvanic cells formed by water droplets. Then, as you can see in this diagram, the iron metal is exposed to moisture and it forms Fe plus Fe2 plus plus 2 electrons. And reduction happens as O2 plus 4 OH plus 4 H plus ions plus 4 electrons which forms H2O. Overall reactions form as, follow, as follows. 2 Fe plus O2 plus 4 H plus ions gives 2 Fe2 plus plus H2O. Next, galvanizing. It is the coating of iron with zinc and zinc is more easily oxidized than iron. So it takes the iron from oxidation. Cathodic protection is the protection of metal by the protection of metal from by connecting it to another metal. Basically, in this protection, one anode has to sacrifice itself to protect the in this diagram we can see that magnesium anode is kept here which is soldered connection which is soldered connected to the insulated copper wire so when it is exposed to the moisture magnesium anode protects the cathode from corrosion next how the Cathodic protection occurs is you can see here. You can see here iron metal is coated with the zinc, and when moisture is exposed to the metal, the zinc will oxidize and form Zn2 plus iron plus 2 electrons, whereas the iron cathode forms just O2 plus 4 OH plus ions plus 4 electrons and it just forms water. No oxidation of iron occurs here. Thank you all.